Last episode, we rescued a Renault Clio from the scrapyard, fixed it in a day, and sold it. The car is now in much better condition, it's back on the road, and we made a small profit. But I reckon I can do even better this time. I found a car that I think is way undervalued, and for reasons I'll soon tell you, should sell for good profit once I've fixed a few problems and done a couple of simple mods. So let's go pick it up. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. If you're anything like me, you'll have saved searches going off like a Tay-Tay pre-sale. But occasionally, a car will catch your eye. A car with potential. Now the make and model isn't necessarily gonna surprise you, but with the experience that I've had over the years, you can drastically improve these things without spending much money and end up with a car that a lot of people wanna buy. And that means another car saved from scrap and back on the road, and if done right, maybe a little bit of profit too. I bought this from a guy who runs a vape shop. Coincidence? He bought it from a mechanic who bought it from an old guy who bought it from its original owner, who was a pesticide salesman. So why was it so cheap? Well, it's got nearly half a million kilometres on the clock, and if the service history is to be believed, it's still got the original driveline. Yep, I got this car for $650 with one day of rego left. Pretty cheap for an all-wheel drive wagon. And the other reasons? Well, there's... This. This. That. This, that, this, 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 gross, chat, dirty, broken, this, floppy, that, gross. So with some supplies, some know-how, some tools, and some cheap stuff I've bought secondhand, we're gonna get this thing back to its wagony glory. First things first, let's fix the body. The faded paint makes the car look a bit sad, and eventually it will break down completely and start to rust. Repainting a big panel like the roof in your shed is a bit tricky because without a paint booth, stuff will fall into the paint. That said, it's also an expensive exercise at a smash repairs because of the amount of labour involved. In our case, labour is free because we love doing it. So I'm going to fire up the sander and strip off the broken down clear coat. The idea is to make the roof as flat as possible to give the paint a good surface to adhere to. If you have the time and want to spend the extra money, High Fill Primer will make this look way better and smoother. But you need to add in the extra drying time, the extra material cost, and also sand it all back. The front bumper and guard are a complete write-off, so we'll need to replace them. I found someone wrecking a later model sedan on Marketplace, and the panels are the same. There's little damage on the bumper, which I will be able to fix up, but the guard is pretty much perfect, so I'm confident it will turn out great. They also get the wizard treatment until they're flat and smooth. I've done a bunch of preparation on both the guard and the front bumper, because they are completely munted. Next, I'm going to do some prep on the roof, but before I can do that, I've got to get the roof rails out of the way to get them out of the way. The headlining's got to come out. That's pretty chat. And so is the rest of the interior. So a lot of that we're going to pull out and chuck straight in the bin and see what we can get cheap on Marketplace to replace it with. If you want to make more profit selling your car, it's a good idea to clean it out. But if you're in a rush and you want to pay for less trying to buy one, offer them a bit less and say that you'll do it for them. A few minutes with a vacuum cleaner and a bin in hand and the inside is already looking way better. Always check under the seat covers if they have them, because you can never be sure if they're hiding damage or actually doing their job and preserving the seats themselves. In our case the rears are actually pretty good, but the fronts will need to be replaced. To be able to properly prep the roof, I'll need to remove the roof rails. That means the headlining has to come out. It's a matter of popping out a few trims, removing the lights, the centre seat belt and some clips and then it can be sent out the back of the tailgate. Then the roof rails are bolted in with some 10mm bolts. Pulling apart an entire interior just to get these off is an absolute hassle but it's going to be worth it. Now I've got a clean surface to whiz back. I'll tape up the trims around the roof so I don't damage them if I get too close while sanding. I'm using 400 and 500 grit paper as I don't want to go back to bare metal or have too many big scratch marks in it that are visible when the new paint goes on. The plastic welding setup is getting another run today to fix a hole in the front bumper. For small repairs like this, it works so well to give you an even surface that you can then add some bog to. Bog or body filler dries really fast, so after a few minutes I'm able to sand it back and I've got a nice flat surface. This will need a little bit of primer over the top, just so the paint will stick. Alright people, it's time to let you in on my plan a little bit more. So, the kind of people that drive Subaru wagons, who are they? They're awesome. Great tasting cut. No, I won't be like that. You know what they like? They like the outdoors. They like adventures. You don't buy wagons unless you're going to take them somewhere and take them on trips. Now, you've already got a lot of storage in the back of one of these things, but you can never have enough storage. That's where this comes into play. These cars come with roof rails from the factory. All you need to do is get some racks to attach something like this to the top of that, and you have so much storage. I'm talking skiing, snowboarding, outdoor activities. 
This one was really cheap. I think it was about 100 bucks because the paint is completely broken up on it. Guess what we have? Sandpaper and paint. That's right, let's do it. The roof is looking nice and flat, so now I can run some plastic around the car to prevent overspray getting on the other panels. Aaron has dropped in to give me a hand with some of the mechanical stuff, which will be the very next thing we'll be doing as soon as the paint is dry. All right, I've been absolutely pumping to get this done. All the prep is now done on the car, the panels, and the roof pod. This is the paint we're using. Looks so awesome. So this time I'm going to use paint in a pot. I'm going to use a paint gun. Here's the reason. The cans that we got last time, I think they're between 30 and 50 bucks a can. This paint gun is $50. Yes, you need an air compressor. I know a lot of people have one already. Make sure you put a dryer in the line, which I'll show you later, to make sure there's no water in the lines. It has to have enough capacity to actually run the thing. But this is a much cheaper way of doing it, and it does give you a better finish. There's more paint volume. There's more control over the air, over the fan, and I think it's just a better way to do it. So I'm going to fill this up. I'm going to paint everything. Then once the base coat's on, we're going to hit it with clear, and we should have a very nice-looking Subaru. Paint guns put out way more material than a spray can, and that means heaps and heaps of overspray. Most of it will hang in the air and then dry and then settle onto the floor and your job, which creates heap of dust. At this point, you may be better off doing all your prep yourself and then taking the car to a paint shop. In a booth with the right equipment, you can also spray activated hardened paint known as 2-pack, but it's more of a health and environmental hazard, so it's not a great idea to spray that at home or outside. All right, people, that's base coat on. This is why you paint in a booth. Look. <laughs> As long as you don't mind your entire shed getting covered in overspray, it's fine. It is acrylic paint, it's not activated, it's still not good for you, so you still need a mask, but it's not as crazy as the two-pack stuff. Anyway, the base coat is on, next I'm going to chuck some clear on it, and then we are done and on to the mechanical stuff. We're going to go into the night for the mechanical stuff, with the aim to have the car finished in the morning. Paint is done, I'm pretty happy with it. Painting not in a booth, real hard. I don't care what anyone says. Getting a good result is difficult, but I'm really happy with how this has turned out. It's dried real fast, which is great as well. So I can unmask the car. I've called in some mates to help me because I want to try and get this done in 24 hours. Don't have heaps of time to mess with this car. I want to get it back on Marketplace and sold. Got a bunch of mods sitting there ready to be used. So we're going to pull this masking tape off, get it onto the hoist and fix it. The paint dries really quickly and within 10 minutes you can touch it without leaving a mark. But the longer it dries, the better, so we'll carefully remove all our masking and then get stuck into some of the mechanical repairs on the car while the paint's drying. Like many cars of this era, and especially with such high kilometres on it, many of the bushings are worn out. The brakes and pads are good because they're easy and cheap to replace, but bushings can be more labour intensive and often get overlooked. We've also got a really noisy bearing on one of the front hubs, so we'll need to press it out and put a new one in. On later cars, these are often just an entire unit you can buy and bolt in, but on ours we also save some money because we retain the hub and only have to change one part. While the suspension is apart and Aaron is busy with the hubs, I'm going to give the calipers a quick clean and some red paint. I reckon they'll pop under the new wheels I've got for this thing and look excellent. The tie rods and ball joints are also completely shagged, and rather than use stock ones, I've opted for upgraded ones. They aren't that much more expensive and will make the car feel a little more responsive on the road. It also gives you scope to correct suspension geometry if you're adding coilovers, which hopefully we will be. Split CV boots are annoying because they spray grease all over your engine bay, and left for long enough the joint itself will wear out and start clicking. CV boots are cheap and the inner ones on Subarus are very simple to replace. With two snap rings undone, we just have to clean the joint, add some new grease and then throw the new boot on and reassemble. Word has got out that we're working on an old Subaru and some mates have arrived to watch and laugh at us. All right, the brakes are done and are looking excellent. Um, it's just a cheap and easy mod to do. I am going for a modified look. These will really pop under the wheels, which I'm very excited to show you. We'll put them on once this is all done. One of the reasons this car was so cheap is because it had busted ball joints, busted CV boots, and also 
a noisy gearbox. Now, we worked out that it's actually a bearing in the back of the transfer case, which means the gearbox doesn't have to come out. You don't have to replace the entire gearbox. Uh, but we've also replaced our board joints while we were there. Rather than using factory replacement, we've upgraded them to white line ones. The cost is actually about the same, but you get some handling improvements. While we're here, might as well modify it, put some better stuff in. So I'm going to keep going with that, drop the exhaust down, continue servicing it, drop all the fluids, and then uh, we're going to have a mad little car. Next, we're going to attack the gearbox, and it's making bad sounds. We think it's a bearing where the centre diff is. It can be replaced with the gearbox still in the car, but the exhaust and tail shaft will need to come off. After pulling the gearbox apart, we've worked out that the centre diff has failed completely. This unit allows slip between the front and rear wheels, and is part of why the all-wheel drive system works so well. When it's broken, it either seizes completely, sometimes takes the gearbox with it, or just makes bad noises. We'll have to get ourselves a new centre diff or a gearbox. I'm not sure, but this has set us back quite a bit. All right, pump the brakes. This is a centre diff. Subarus have them. It's in the back of the gearbox. Uh, kind of like, imagine it like a transfer case. Gets the drive from the front to the back. Um, it's completely cooked. Somehow it grew, which means it just stops working. It gets really noisy and it can take the gearbox with it. Uh, and this has cooked us getting it done in 24 hours, which is what I was hoping and totally feasible, assuming we didn't have any major mechanical failure. Uh, so that changes things a little bit. I'm gonna have to get a replacement gearbox. You can get center diffs rebuilt and put them all back together, uh, but a gearbox is actually probably gonna be a better and cheaper option because these cars are not worth heaps of money and neither are the parts. It means we'll be able to get a box. Uh, the bearings that we we're gonna put in this that we knew were flogged um, were about $300 or $400. A replacement gearbox is around the same. So, gonna pull that gearbox out, put a replacement gearbox in, continue on and try and get it done. But yeah, shit happens, huh? I'll have to remove the old gearbox. Well, half a gearbox because the back half is completely missing. But without pesky turbos in the way on these naturally aspirated models, this is a quick job with a gearbox jack. While all that's happening, we're also going to be draining some fluids from the engine and rear diff and we'll change them as well. So the rear main seal is completely shagged. I don't even know what's on it. It looks like fur is growing on it. Maybe bits of clutch material, but the clutch itself actually looks pretty new. Uh, so there's a good chance we'll be able to just go again with that. Uh, we'll get the flywheel machined because it is cheap and easy to do, 50 bucks. Just means it won't have shuddering or any weird stuff. The rear mount seal, however, is completely cooked. Luckily, they're easy and cheap to replace. We'll do that right now. No more oil leaks. Changing the rear main seal is an absolute must do when swapping a gearbox. Any leaks from here can make a big mess and also get into your clutch and cause it to slip. All right, we are gonna turn lemons into lemonade and get a gearbox. Um, I found one at a place called Auto Rec, which is out on the Horsley Drive in Sydney. And uh, apparently they have one. Gearbox codes everything when you're trying to get a replacement gearbox to make sure it's the right ratio, to make sure it's the right gears, uh, so the car actually drives. And in Subarus, because it's all wheel drive, they have to match. In this case, it looks like we're good. You get the gearbox code off the side of the gearbox, and then you party. So you're gonna load it in the car, get it back to the shed. It was a very long night. We're still going, but we're determined to get this thing done today. Brendan from Auto Rec said he had some gearboxes on the shelf and to come down and have a look. It turns out the dual range box that's behind the two liter engine in our car is a little bit rare but the replacement has the same final drive ratio, which is the most important thing as it won't cook the center and rear diff. The gear ratios inside the gearbox themselves may be a little different, but it should still drive just fine. Does your car have a sloppy gear stick like this? Well, the reason is usually actually under the car, at least it is on a Subaru, and it's to do with the bushings that hold it all together. So there's a gear shift linkage, and there's this mount that goes at the back, this mount that goes in the linkage, and then these little bushings that are inside here. And they just, they're under the car so they're exposed to the weather, they're exposed to all the dirt and grime and they do wear out and then it ends up sloppy and the reason is this. So you change these, you change these, you put it all back together and suddenly your gear stick feels as good as new or better. It's a hard job to do by yourself because it has to be perfectly lined up, then the input shaft has to be pushed through the clutch disc. With a few big shoves, it's in and I can put all the bell housing bolts back into place. I want to get this car running and driving today, and with daylight quickly running out, I'm going to pump through as many of these jobs as I can to get it running and driving. I'll also call in some reinforcements to help me tidy up the interior. Heaps of progress has been made, even though there's been a couple of setbacks, and setbacks do happen when you're messing with cheap, 
old and leaky cars. So we're probably about half a day behind of where I wanted to be. But still, this is an exciting part because the car needed tires. Now, a set of tires for a stock car like this, average one, maybe six, $700. I got these, which are STI BRZ wheels with Michelin tires that have a good amount of tread left on them for $700, which I'm stoked about. I cannot wait to see what they look like on the car. But it would look a bit high and pogo sticky without coilovers. But on Marketplace, I found these coilovers. Apparently, they've been bouncing around a bunch of different Subaru Gen 3 owners. And, uh, and normally, they're sold for a price of a case of beer. So that's what I paid. I just paid it for a case of beer and I got these. So we're going to put some strut tops on them, throw them in the car, put the wheels on. I cannot wait to see what it looks like. I think it's going to look excellent. So adding wheels and coilovers isn't necessarily about adding a lot of value, I guess, because potentially you're going to spend more on that, which at my current spend is $775, then you're going to get back because maybe people don't want wheels, maybe they want stock wheels, maybe they're just not interested. But what it does do is it opens up a bit of a marketing thing where more people will see it. More people are going to be like, oh, that looks cool. And then imagine themselves driving it to the snow. That is what this is entirely about. Imagine themselves driving in the snow, camping, the opportunities that it opens up. That's what I'm actually selling because the car itself is not perfect. Is there cleaner examples? Probably. It's about restoring it, putting it back on the road and putting it to use. The new wheels look fantastic, but if the car still has stock suspension, it's going to sit really high and look a little bit dorky. I managed to score these coilovers for the cost of a case of beer. They're a little old and worn looking, but they're made specifically for a Gen 3 wagon, so they should fit great. I think I just worked out why they cost so little. Turns out they don't come with the spring retainers and well, you can't get them. But with some creative and definitely don't try this at home style engineering, I think I found a way to center the spring on the strut. Then the strut tops can be bolted back into place and we have ourselves a working set of coilovers. It's time to add fluids, put the engine bay back together. I'm using Castrol Edge 1060. It is a thicker oil. This engine, as far as you know, has over 450,000 kilometers on it. So. Um, a thicker oil can be a good thing just for longevity. Everything's probably loosened up a little bit in there. So using my magical Subaru funnel, which I'll never not think is awesome, we're going to fill this up with oil, fill up the gearbox while we're doing it. That's also going there. And then we can put the, all the air filter back on and all the rest of it and then start it up, make sure it still drives. The engine and gearbox now have a fresh gut full of Castrol oil and I can get the car off the hoist and fix the front panels. dirtier and a bit behind where I wanted to be but the outside is looking really good it still needs a buff I've got a few more jobs to do but it looks so much better than it did before uh, we're gonna buff all this restore the paint as best we can buff up on the roof I'm a bit light with the clear coat in a few spots uh, and a few more things to do but very happy with it gonna call in some reinforcements as well to help with the interior stereo seats carpet cleaning while I do all those jobs next the roof rails can be bolted back on I sanded them back and gave them a quick coat of black paint as they were as badly faded as the roof was. All right, there is the roof box on custom made roof rails. <laughs> um, there's two ways of doing it, either buy roof rails, but they can be expensive. Quoted them on this, $700. Instead, $7 worth of metal, drill bit. That's it. Um, but hopefully this box will never have to come off because this car will be adventuring for its entire existence. Mounting the roof box is my next job. I'm going to bolt the box to some thick metal tube which will then be bolted through the roof rails. It's a one-time install and neater and a hell of a lot cheaper than brand new roof racks, which is the way you would normally do it. There's two things you spend most of your time touching when you're in the car. It's not what you're thinking. It's your steering wheel and it's your seats. Your butt is on your seat for a lot of kilometres, in this case 450,000 k's over 20 years. So the seats were pretty gross, they're in the bin. These are out of an Impreza RS, they do fit the Gen 3 Liberty. They also kind of match the interior, which is a mad bonus. We got them really cheap. I'm going to chuck them in, and then the inside will be looking excellent.
it's time to start up the car and head to the campsite. Hey! <laughs> So here we are in the great outdoors. This is what it's all about. I've got my Go Anywhere Subaru behind me, all wheel drive, perfect snow machine, perfect for going camping, just like this. Got my fire, got my kettle, got my cooking pot, my comfy chair, everything that I need. It's about 10 o'clock at night. Yesterday at 10 a.m. is when we started working on the car and started painting it. Uh, about 10 o'clock last night, we realized that our center diff and the gearbox was completely toast. And so I thought there was no way we we're gonna get finished in time. Um, but then this morning I managed to get a gearbox and then we spent all day getting it done and the car is now in the condition that's in. I'm very, very happy with how it's going. So I thought I'd give you a bit of a breakdown of the cost of the entire project, uh, being that that's kind of the point is to see how much it costs to rescue something like this, to get it back on the road and when it's sold to see if we've actually made any money. So the car was 650 as you know. I had to put, four, uh, had to put six months rego on it, so we're at 1050. You can't sell them without rego, it's just too hard. Uh, we got bearings for the gearbox originally, they were $300, we were able to return them and the gearbox that I got for the car was also $300. Um, external, the paint was about 100 bucks. it's a bit cheaper this time because we just got the, the paint and just used existing stuff. The front guard was 150 and the bumper was 100 so that's 350 Wheels and tyres um, is where we spent up a little bit, so the ones that were on it were probably okay. They made it through Rego but they were a bit worn and also I think it just kind of improves the look and makes the market a bit bigger by having wheels like this on it. So 700, the roof box is 150, pretty cheap for what it is, cut and polish about 50 bucks. Uh, interior wise, we put the WX seats for 300 bucks. It's got a new little armrest because that was worn out and it's got a shifter boot on it. Um, suspension wise, we also spent up here as well because it, it was a bit worn out, it has high Ks. You could spend less on this if you just got factory replacement rubber rather than the upgraded stuff that we did, but while you're in there, it kind of makes sense to modify it. That's kind of the point of this. Uh, we spent about $800 on all that stuff. For the service, oil, air filter, engine gearbox oil, drive shaft boots, front passenger wheel hub and a rear main still about $350. Then my camping gear is about $150 and I will include that in the cost because I am going to include it with the car when I list it to try and sell the dream. So all that, including buying the car, equates to $4,608. A little bit higher than I thought I'd get, but then again, wheels and tires, bushes, we kind of spent up a bit. So let's pretend for a sec we didn't buy wheels and just got the same ones we started with. Doesn't look as cool, but then we're at 3,708, which is kind of getting a bit more in bargain territory, I reckon. If you don't get the stereo, we also got a cheap stereo off marketplace in there. Take that away, you're at just under three and a half grand. And if you didn't do all the bushes, um, you'd be at two and a half, and maybe you'd have a hundred or two hundred dollars worth of rubber bushes to put in it. So two and a half grand, absolute bargain. Three and a half with all the extras, okay, it's got some nice handling stuff. Good, another thousand bucks on top of that. Wheels, really fresh tires, looks better. The coilovers were the biggest win in this. They just cost a case of beer, 75 bucks. You just never know what you're gonna get out there in the second hand market. And that's kind of the fun part of it. And um, of course, labor doesn't come into it because it's, you, you're doing it with your own time and your own skills and your own, yes, okay, you're using some rags and some brake cleaner and braking tools, whatever it is, but that's kind of the fun part for me anyway. Um, so we're at four and a half grand. I had a bit of a look at the market to see what these are going for. There's actually not that many wagons for sale. They've either been driven to the ground or they're popular and people are keeping them because they are going on trips with them. Sedans are everywhere, uh, but Subaru wagons, this kind of rego in decent condition are between five and six thousand dollars. There are some outliers that are cheaper here and there, but usually something wrong with them or they're really worn out like this was. Uh, so I'm going to try and sell it. I'm going to put it at five and a half and see what I can get because anything over that four and a half that we've spent, um, I might get up to a thousand bucks profit if someone just comes and buys it. Maybe I'll accept five. Okay, I've made 500 bucks. It's not nothing. That's that's actually clear profit. Of course, not including labour. So. I'm going to list it, I'm going to take some photos of all the camping gear, sell the dream, sell the sizzle, not the sausage, because it's uh, an interesting sausage, this old Subaru. But it's been a very cool experience doing it. I'm glad that it didn't get crushed, because that's it, absolutely where it was going. It was going to the wreckers for sure. And now it's back on the road to live another day. I'm really so happy with how this car has turned out. It was absolutely a nugget that was going to scrap. But in less than two days, it's gone from this to this. So the car hasn't been about maximum profits, but it has been about potential. It's freshly serviced and ready to go on some adventures. With a roof box, some adjustable suspension, a clean interior, nice wheels and tyres, it drives great. And who knows, maybe it will do another 400,000 kilometres. I mean, probably not, right? Edgar The car is done. A profit-making exercise in this case, I would say it probably wasn't. Um, but I'm really proud of the work we did. I'm really happy with how it turned out and it is absolutely a car that I would drive around. But I'm not going to be driving it around because I did manage to sell it for $4,800. Now, the maths from a few minutes ago for you guys, 
That's $192 profit. Uh, so if you are talking about labour or that's your concern, then this is not necessarily a money making thing. What it is, is a very, very fun way to rescue a car and get it back on the road. I really enjoyed it. I love getting all the parts for it. I love the creativity of working out what you're gonna put on it. I like the feeling of restoring it. I like making it all clean and nice and a really cool place to be. And I'm glad that someone is driving that thing around and enjoying it. So thanks for watching. Uh, we're just fixing and flipping some cars for the fun of it to see if we can make some cash. I've got another one in mind now though. Now that I've done this one, I know exactly what I'm gonna do next and I'm very, very excited for that. Thanks for watching. See you next time. I'm gonna go have a sleep. That was a very busy couple of days. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, my back.